Once again in her kitchen on Delaney Road, Jane Pembroke oversees the luncheon table for her two daughters, Diana and Sophie, who in this June of 1914 are making their first visit to the Pembroke Lilac Sanctuary at halfway there. Neither Diana nor her younger sister Sophie, both of whom have been away at school or travelling, are aware of the wrath emanating from just up the road at the Gaumont Farm. It is that wrath that occupies at the moment the mind of Jane Pembroke, who recalls her earlier premonition of danger towards her family and Nathaniel Gaumont's warnings about his father's vow to reclaim his south tract, sold by Nathaniel to the Pembrokes for the Lilac Sanctuary. Jane's husband, Henry, heeding Nathaniel's well-intentioned warnings, has hired protection, but has gone out of town on business, leaving Jane in dread of the vengeful old timer turning up when and where she least expects him. If it is the Reverend Gaumont that you await, then turn around, Jane Pembroke. Turn around, because the Reverend is peering in your kitchen window at present, and the man in black has finally arrived. Annex, the continuing story of a peculiar bend in the avenue. Traffic goes north, traffic goes south, the streetcar runs between, and all we can do is try to keep up. There's a sense of futility on any day this hot Sister Sophie. I do believe that Mother is keeping herself entirely too occupied in her new kitchen. Mother seems so worried and nervous. My dear, she always appears slightly worried and nervous. That's the nature of our mother. Yet, you are correct. She does seem vexed in particular. Perhaps it's having us here like this when everything is still so new for her. Hmm. Who can be certain with Mother? Perhaps. I myself am only passing through en route to my next adventure. Perhaps it will be my greatest adventure yet. For now, though, let us enjoy our company together and that of father and mother. Tomorrow, early in the morning, we can take another walk along the cliffs. You like that? You're drawn to them. I like those walks, that we don't have to talk at all. Diana, do you have an adventure planned? Is that why you stay up writing those letters at night? <sighs> Sister of our prying eyes! Do you creep the house at night? Sisters, no. Are you in love with a man? Why, Sophie, I... Oh, goodness. Uh, 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 where did that man come from? Good afternoon, young ladies. Who are you and what do you want? Sophie Pembroke. Allow me to make my introduction. You are the young Pembroke gals, the dynamic debutante Diana, and, well... The other one. Arrived for a visit at halfway there. And I, my dearies, am the Reverend Garmon, your neighbor to the north. At last, we are met. <laughs> I believe that I have business with your fine parents. I'm afraid I don't understand you, Reverend. What makes you laugh so? The airs. What amuses me are the fine airs put on by the daughters of sharecroppers. Yes, the man in black has finally arrived, making contact with the young daughters of Henry and Jane Pembroke, against whom he has vowed to wage war in order to reclaim his south tract. As he darkens the Pembroke door, however, he fails to reckon that one of these young ladies may prove more than he anticipated in the defense of her family and their home on Delaney Road. Which of the Pembroke sisters will strike out at the revenge-addled Reverend Gaumont, who has appeared out of nowhere in the noonday sun? Heirs? Sharecroppers? F father and mother and the Lilac Sanctuary? Reverend Gaumont, 
I know not what your business is with my family. However, I suggest you accord my mother and father and their place of business the respect that they are due. All of this belongs to me by rightful, and I'm going to put you off it, every last one of you. Or maybe you'll just go back to where you came from today, right away before it gets dark. What happens when it gets dark? Then I return with my congregation, and folks wonder about whatever did happen to the Pembrokes, the way that they wonder about whatever did happen to that Bats family. The Bats family? It would be a shame to have another tragedy of that magnitude and mystery. No one ever saw them again. You, you come here and threaten me, to threaten us with my young sister Sophie here to see this display. You threaten my family in broad daylight, Reverend Coleman. We shall not be terrorized by daylight or dark. Leave now. And you intend to remove me by force, Diana Pembroke? That I do. Sophie, fetch me that mallet nearby from the croquet set. Sophie, fetch it now. Mind what I say? Yes, Diana. Child, I go whenever and wherever I wish. On foot, by sea, by land, by air, on the wings of the wind. I won't be ordered off my southern tract by an old maid with a secret. Tell me, Diana Pembroke, who are you writing to in the pale moonlight? Could it be a certain man, a man married before and freshly divorced? An industrialist of notable wealth and social prominence, someone to take you away from all these lilacs. He's elsewhere, and you plan to go elsewhere, to find and manage a way to make it happen in the name of love, to go there and marry this man and return only as Mrs. Lowell. Damn you! It's the truth that hurts. Leave this land without delay. Not without having audience with your mother. I know your father's gone on business. I know he's away, you see. However, I'd be pleasured to meet your dear mother. Reverend Gaumont, you have no business with my mother or anyone else here. Now you leave, or I swear I'll give you reason to wish you had. <laughs> Do you mean to bludgeon me with that fearsome croquet stick that you clutch so mightily? My dear, you must give that to me and stop waving it around as someone could get hurt, you or that ghostly sister of yours. Come here, let me have it. Don't you touch me! Stay back! I'll strike you! I will! Diana! My dear, I have cheated death in savage seas and risen forth from the grave and am therefore not frightened by a spinster and her simpleton sister. Oh, God! By God! God, I'm bleeding. Diana, you hit him. Oh, here comes Mother and some of the boys that Father hired on. You leave this place, Mr. Gaumont. If you aren't convinced, these boys will be happy to persuade you. Resurrected or not, your flesh remains weaker than their fists. I'll be back. Back to see that you all pay dearly, but especially you, Diana Pembroke. You're going to pay the most of all, gal, because you're going to pay in the long run. Well, thank heavens he's gone. And thank you, boys. Go about your rounds about the property. Girls, come inside. Mother, I'm... Frightened. Don't fret, Sophie. He's gone. But he'll be back. Yes, Diana Pembroke. Reverend Gaumont will return. But he was also right about you and those letters written by Moonlight, which we'll learn more about in the next installment of Annex.